friends we will now present to you the third lecture on module 2 where we are going to discuss liquid release models under the module 2 of accident modeling risk assessment and management which is an online course on HSE at NPTEL IIT Madras. Before we look into the liquid release models and the details and case study in this example let us quickly see a brief summary of what are the worst disasters in oil industry. Oil tanker Terry Canyon grounded in the English Channel 1967, UK production platform Piper Alpha in 1976, capsize of Norwegian accommodation platform Alexander Killan in 1980, Exxon Valdez oil spill 1989, pipeline rupture in Yusikin area Russia 1994, Benzie field fire on 11 December 2005 at the Hertfordshire oil storage terminal. All these accidents really show a worst scenario which added to the complexity on the Gulf of Mexico BP oil spill 2010. So, liquid release models in terms of risk assessment or quantitative quantified risk assessment plays a very important role in HSC or safety. Therefore, what is the need for the present study in terms of safety? Higher growth and industrialization in the last few decades resulted in numerous problems with the handling and use of hydrocarbons in oil and gas industries. Major accidents represent the ultimate most disastrous way in which a petroleum industry projects can go wrong. Accidents cause death, suffering and pollution of the environment and disruption of business which is a very serious consideration in economic perspective in one of the vital industries of any country which is oil and gas industry. Therefore, it is important to understand the techniques to minimize these accidents through risk evaluation of various installations which are vital in the present scenario. There are various methods that are used for risk assessments in oil and gas industries, hazard and operability study which we call as hazard study which we discussed in detail in the first module with good examples. Safety and operability study which is CEFOP which is an extension of ASAP study which can be applied to the focus on operational safety. Preliminary hazard analysis which is PHA which is also a part of hazard identification evaluation which we did in couple of examples in the last module. Failure mode effect analysis which we discussed in detail with two examples case studies in newly developed design FMEA for offshore deep water production platforms. Quantitative risk analysis which is a quantified method which is QRA. In the list above ladies and gentlemen the first four are qualitative approaches. However, in FMEA you have quantification of risk in terms of risk priority number whereas, PHA, SAFOP and ASOP are purely qualitative indications of hazard identification and analysis. The last one in the list is of course, a quantification of risk analysis which is now we are going to see in liquid release models. Let us talk about quantitative risk assessment methods. Risk assessment is essentially determination of quantitative or qualitative value of risk related to a concrete situation and a recognized hazard. Quantitative risk assessment is therefore, a mathematical approach which requires calculations of two components of risk. The first component is the magnitude of the potential loss and the second one is the probability at which this loss will occur. So, we are talking about economic perspective of risk in terms of the economic loss that can be perceived by an industry if accidents are matured enough to cause disasters as far as economic perspective is concerned. Let us quickly see what should be the objective or what are the objectives of QRA. Estimating risk levels and assessing their significance is the vital requirement of any QRA study. It should enable us to identify the main contributors that causes risk in the industry. It should be able us to define accident scenarios in terms of design levels. We should be able to compare different design options. Therefore, we can either mitigate risk or at least eliminate or cause risk reduction at the design stage itself. 
evaluating risk reduction measures is a very important outcome of any QRA. Demonstrating acceptability to regulators and the workforce is a very important and vital responsibility of any oil and gas industry so that risk in terms of perceived safety is also seen as one of the vital goal of any oil and gas industry. One should be able to identify safety crucial procedures in equipments so that risk is mitigated even before a serious catastrophic accident is encountered. It is very important to identify accident precursors so that the economic loss which can result from a perceived accident can be minimized if it cannot be mitigated completely. The flow chart which is seen on the screen now shows a very important guideline of how QRA can be quantified. Let us look at the study basis, what is the important study requirement for a given problem. For a given problem, one should be able to identify the system definition. Then from the system defined, we should be able to take out the hazard identification. Once the system is defined, prior to that for a study basis given, we should be able to establish or refer to the standard available risk acceptance criteria. As I told you, oil and gas industry has got inbuilt risk acceptance levels which are specified by the regulatory agencies all over the world. Of course, this may not be common for all countries, but every country do follow an acceptable risk level prior to which is applicable to oil and gas industries. So, based on the predefined risk acceptance criteria, let us define the system and try to identify the hazards which can result in scenarios of accidents. Then we should do a frequency analysis and the consequence analysis which we showed in the last examples, which will give me combination of what is called a risk picture. Then I decide whether the risk what I get here is acceptable. If the risk is acceptable, then I proceed further so that I can employ risk reduction measures only if they are practically feasible in terms of economic perspective. If they are not acceptable, then I must do risk reducing measures and get back to the defined definition of the system with modified design values, then perform the same flow operations back again and we are going to keep on doing this until the risk picture what we get from the modified system comes to an acceptable level of risk. So, dear friends, it is very important that in oil and gas industry, whatever may be a design process, whatever may be a system definition, you should ultimately land up in proving to the public and to the agency that your risk perceived from the problem is within acceptable limits. As long as they are not within acceptable limits, you are not supposed to execute the system and you have to keep on revising the design or the system itself by and large. So, once the system gets an acceptable level of risk, then one can talk about whether we can further mitigate risk if it is economically practical. Let us talk about system definition, defining the installation. Therefore, the scope of work for QRA can be one should define the boundaries for the study. As I told you, any study cannot be applied to the whole plan because if you start applying any risk an analysis methods for the whole plan, the focus objective of the details of perseverance of hazard or risk can be lost. Therefore, one can divide the plan into different segments. Therefore, it is important that one must define the boundaries for the present study. We should also consider which installation should be included in the study, which can be excluded in the study. And of course, you should also very clearly give a message from the report that what is the perceived or preferred phase of installation of the entire project. When we talk about frequency analysis, estimates of likelihood for accidents to occur is an important part of frequency analysis. Frequencies are obtained based on the following two vital characteristics. One is analysis of previous accidents based on purely experience. Secondly, it can also arrive from numerical or theoretical modeling. There are different guidelines available for doing QRA. One of the guidelines interestingly followed in oil and gas industry is CPR 18E, which consists data for few accident scenarios available for applicable to oil and gas industries. When we talk about the second component of QRA, which is consequence modeling, it actually evaluates the effects of the accidents and their impact on the problem. Estimation of consequences of each possible event can be either done by a computer modeling or it can also be based on accident experience or judgments 
if they found appropriate for apply problem. There are different software available in the market in the open domain which can be essentially used for consequence modeling. One of that example is fast risk given by DNV. In the next lecture, I will try to solve a problem using a specific software uh, which can give you a hands on experience of the software very easily how a risk analysis can be used or can be easily done using one of the software. There are many such softwares available. I will explain all the software in a very brief idea in the last module of this course. Parallelly, there is something called a textbook called yellow book which also helps you to prescribe different models that can determine the outflow and dispersion of dangerous substances in their environment which is given by the guidelines of CPR 14E. After understanding the frequency modeling and consequent modeling, one is interested to know how to compute risk because we have to quantify them in terms of a number. When the frequencies and consequences of each event in a given problem are estimated, then you can combine them to form measures of overall risk. Risk to life is often expressed in two complementary forms. One is what we have already seen as individual risk, which is the risk experienced by an individual person in the plant. The second can be what is called a group risk or a societal risk. This is of course very important because this is the risk experienced by the whole group of people exposed to the hazard. There is not essentially include only people on board working in the plant, but also population which is circumscribedly located around the electric sector of the plant where it is situated. So, societal risk as I said in the beginning of the first module, it is very important for land gas industry that you must not only ensure safety for your plant, but also safety in terms of operation should be confirmed for the adjacent people living around the plant. So, societal risk is also a very vital outcome of any risk analysis methods. You can also use other software by name safety which is also by DNV which is of course now upgraded as fast risk. Once we understand how to compute risk or how to quantify risk in terms of consequence and frequency proportions given in a given problem, then one should be able to also recommend or to identify or perceive the methods or techniques available for risk reduction. Recommendations are essentially to be made at the end of the study to bring down the risk within acceptable limits. There can be benefits which should be evaluated by repeating the above process with incorporation of reduction measures. One should always recommend risk reduction methods only if they are economically viable. Economic considerations of the measures can be then compared with the risk benefits what you achieve by what we call cost benefit analysis. The methodology adopted for QRA is shown in a very brief cycle as you see here. Let us talk about introduction to the study. You must collect data based on the ASAP study what you conduct and with of course discussions with engineers practicing in the industry. Based on the experiences gained by the surveys conducted on hazard done can always identify the hazards very clearly which becomes a data input to the risk analysis software. Once the risk analysis software receives the data input then you can do the process of risk analysis to calculate and identify different release scenarios. Risk presentation and recommendations are given at the end of the flow chart so that the recommendations of risk mitigation should be always evaluated with economic perspective. Risk reduction methods should only be recommended when they are economically viable provided the risk level should be brought within the allowable or acceptable limits of current industrial standards practiced in that country. One can ask me a question. If you do a software analysis for QRA, what could be a typical outcome of the study? The graph shown here on the screen is a typical output of a leak of a pipeline in terms of radiation intensity for a jet fire consequence. I will also show an example of how this figures or this studies can be resulted in this kind of outcome by taking an example in the next lecture. So, there is a very classical outcome of one of the consequence analysis which has been done for a specific leakage of a pipeline. The conditions used for the study are very clearly indicated here. The wind direction is what you see in the blue color for example. There are different early plots which are given 
for different radiation intensity for example the green one shows an ellipse of radiation intensity 4 kilowatt per square meter. So, radiation intensity of 4 kilowatt per square meter will be available when the pipeline is ruptured for this specific circumferential radius in the intensity of the given value whereas the pink one and the orange one are respectively 37.5 kilowatt per square meter intensity and 12.5 kilowatt per square meter intensity. So, we try to mark or circumscribe the area peripheral area which will have intensity as low as 4 kilowatt per square meter and as high as 37.5 kilowatt per square meter. So, this is a very interesting outcome which can be one of the outcome or the result of jet fire consequence that arise from leakage of pipeline in terms of radiation intensity. Of course, quantitative risk analysis has certain limitations. Let us see what are them very quickly. Different approaches adopted for QRA unfortunately can yield different results. The scenario selection which is used for QRA very strongly depends on the expertise of the risk assessor. Change in environmental conditions like operation and temperature, humidity and wind speed can alter the results significantly. Each software model if it is not carefully done simulates different types of results for the same release scenarios. So, one should always apply justification as an outcome of the software results before it is practiced or recommended to the industry. All countries do not have statutes specifying acceptable risk limits. This is very unfortunate, but it is a fact that all countries do not or may be in the stage of improving or prescribing regulatory statutes. As of now, all countries do not have acceptable statutes which is applicable to oil and gas industries which explicitly say what are the acceptable risk limits in oil and gas industry. Most importantly friends, the database what you will be using for probability can be different for different studies and of course, we all know the results of public studies always depend on the ensemble what you give as an input to the study. We now take up the case study, apply liquid release models in this case study and show how recommendations can be derived from a case study as you see here. I am discussing the same group gathering station case study which I explained you in an ASAP model in the previous module. Group gathering station is presently considered for the study now. The objective of the present study in liquid release model is to identify and assess the hazards and risks that arise from day to day activities of GGS. The to eliminate or reduce risk, a level of alert is being followed in terms of risk to human health, risk of injury, risk of damage to the plant, equipments and environment, business interruption or loss etcetera all are considered in the current study. Recommendations are given at the end of the study to the management to comply with the regulatory measures, company policy and business requirements. Let us quickly see what are the steps being followed in this case study. The first step is to identify the hazards and major loss of containment what we call LOC events followed by which we should do calculation of physical effects of accidental scenarios. Then one should do consequence analysis for the identified hazards. Then one should prepare identification of damage limits, quantify the risks and do contour mapping of the layouts. One should focus on individual risk quantification and contour mapping and also societal risk quantification and graphical representation of societal risk that may arise from the liquid release of a GGS. Ultimately, at the end, one should also give hazard mitigation recommendations only based on the study conducted, not generic recommendations. To conduct any study, as we all now understand, there are always certain preliminary requirements. Let us see what are preliminary requirements which are considered in the present study. Piping instrumentation diagram indicating design and operating status are available to the assessor now for this present problem. PFDs are given in detail to the assessor. Operational and control philosophies which are practiced in the GGS are understood after conducting inspection and what if surveys in the GGS study. 
layer drawings are specifically drawn to scale to make them to understand what are the distances between different hazard scenarios. Details of fire detection and protection facilities are examined carefully which are available not only in the plant but also in the near vicinity. Details of emergency shutdown system if applicable in the plant are carefully taken and considered in the recommendations. Of course, most importantly details of population located around the plant is also considered in the study because based on which societal risk can be evaluated. The process flow diagram what you see here is as same as what we have seen in the previous case in ASAP study, but interestingly if you see here there are different segments marked in colors of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Some of the points are given in blue and some of the points are shown in red. There are very interesting features the points which are shown or the segments which are shown in red do indicate risk of very high order based on the studies. So, the results obtained from the study are superimposed on the process flow diagram for an easy understanding of the process engineer to know which are the segments which have high risk, which are the segments in the plant which does not have higher risk or which are risk within alarm levels. Let us quickly recollect the salient features of group gathering station which I already know, but still the facility is designed to process 1100 cubic meter per day of oil plus 1000 cubic meter per day of separated water and the corresponding associated GOR is about 10 volume per volume. The feed characteristics which are given to the station are the following. The well fluid pressure is about 10 kg per centimeter square. The operational temperature is 50 degree Celsius. The product specification are the following. The treated oil in the group gathering station has specific gravity of about 0 0.97 at 15 degree Celsius and it is of APA grade 14. The viscosity of the oil treated in group gathering station is about 12,600 centipoise at 25 degree Celsius. The associated gas in the station is highly negligible. If you look at the separated water from the process station of GGS, the specific gravity of water is 1 with a centipoise viscosity of 1.0. The pH of the water separated ranges from 6 to 9. The temperature operation is about 75 to 80 degree Celsius. Let us now see what are different hazards identified in the group gathering station in different segments marked as 1 to 9 in the process flow diagram. The process facilities are carefully reviewed and the most credible failure cases from the process industry as in case of this case as group gathering station is carefully chosen. Now, one may ask me a question, what are those most credible failure scenarios which are chosen for the present study? Various sizes of leakages, full bore rupture and catastrophic rupture are some of the examples which are considered as MCF that is most credible failure cases in the present study. The failure frequency of occurrence is either equal to or greater than 10 power minus 9 to quantify them or to qualify them as a credible failure. The lethal damage which can cause by such failures should have at least 1 percent probability that occurs outside the establishment's boundary or the transport route. So, to qualify a specific failure as a most credible failure in a given section of the plant, apart from identifying the various sources of leaks, bore rupture and catastrophic rupture, one should also see what are the failure frequencies of those occurrences and what would be the lethal damage caused to the society around the plant. Based on these two values, you can always identify and enlist most credible failure scenarios in a given plant. Once you know them, then for each failure case, you must estimate the release rate and release duration. This is very, very important because already we studied in the last lecture in module 2 what we talk about the lethal damage and lethal dosages, etcetera. So, it all depends upon at what rate the chemical or the gas is released and what is the duration of the release because it will tell you whether the contamination or concentration of liquid release is what we call as liquid quantity in chemical exposure index, what is the duration of that release is very important. So, please predefine the release rate and release duration for each failure case 
as identified as most credible failure case in a given system. Once you do this in the present case for example, the repression system is available which is very important to note it is a manual type for which the outflow release duration is taken as 30 minutes. So, if you have any automatic suppression system available in the plant, then you can always consider the release duration or the control mechanism of the duration in your study because this plays a very important role in giving final recommendations for the risk mitigation and control. Let us quickly see what are the list of hazardous scenarios identified in the given plant. There are two cases identified separately, one is for the pipeline, one is for the tanks. For the pipeline, the leak diameter is 5 mm, 25 mm, 100 mm and full bore lecture. 8 inches group header pipeline to heat a theta is one segment which has got this kind of hazard scenario. Pipeline which travels from heat a theta to emulsion recipient tank is another area. Pipeline from ER pumps to jumbo heat a theta is another segment where leak scenario is identified. Pipelines from jumbo heat a theta to TR tanks is also another area where leaks can be identified. Pipeline from dispatch pumps to CTF that is common tank facility is another area where the leak scenario is identified in the present study. Now, these are as far as the pipelines are concerned. The leak scenario is also identified at the tank levels at 10 mm of diameter rupture and a catastrophic rupture which can happen at heater theta, emulsion recipient tanks, jumbo heater theta and treated oil recipient tanks what is called TR tanks. So, the rupture can happen either in the tanks or in the pipelines therefore, the scenario is identified as the numbers of 1 to 9 as you saw in the classroom flow diagram in the beginning of this presentation. Let us quickly see what are the process parameters considered in the study. If you talk about the scenarios of 8 inch group header pipeline to heat a theta and we talk about 5 mm leak size, 20 mm leak size, 100 mm leak size and rupture. The material is emulsion plus gas plus hydrogen sulphide. The volume is specified as 625 cubic meter per day which is taken as a statistical value available in the plant. The volume for 30 minute exposure is also considered because this is for day and you can always calculate this for 30 minutes interval. You already know what are the operation temperature of this particular group header pipeline in heater theta. We also know what is the pressure and diameter of the pipeline at which it is being operated. Let us try about different scenarios of 5 mm leak, 25 mm leak, 100 mm leak and whole bore rupture. The length of the pipeline in meters available here which is physically measured in the plant and we also classify whether the pipeline is above ground or underground. So, such kinds of studies of failure scenario are done for group header pipeline, pipeline that travels from heater theta to ER tank, pipeline from ER pumps to jumbo heater theta, pipelines from jumbo heater theta to TR tanks and pipeline from dispatch pumps to common tank facility. So, all individual scenarios for each one of the guidelines are quantified and process parameters varying from the volume per exposure of 30 minutes, temperature, pressure and the rupture consequences and length of the different pipelines are quantified in a given problem before QRA is attempted for the segment of pipeline failure. Similarly, for the tanks also they are identified the heater theta, the ER tanks, the jumbo heater theta and TR tanks. These are the possible four tanks where 10 mm leak size and catastrophic rupture can take place. They are quantified, the material is classified, volume is known, pressure, temperature, diameter and length or height of the tank because this is what the liquid release rate can be computed is quantified and then the leak diameter in terms of either 10 mm leak size or catastrophic rupture is quantified for QRA. Once the process conditions and parameters are evaluated for the given segment of the PFD, then we also consider the weather conditions for the analysis. In the present study, the weather conditions estimated on the base of available climate data and other meteorological data of the plant location compiled by IMD. The wind velocity is varying from 1.4 meter per second to 6 meter per second on an average. Various stability class are then considered for the study. For example, in the day class it is considered to be B and D. B refers to unstable class only less sunny and more windy. D refers to a neutral class which has got light sun and high wind or overcast windy night. 
whereas for the night stability class we have assumed F which is a stable class night with moderate clouds and light winds. The humidity in the daytime is 38 percent, the night time 64 percent, temperature in the daytime is 32.8 degree Celsius and night it is 23.7 degree Celsius which are considered as input for the analysis as far as the weather parameters are considered. Then we perform the consequence analysis, we calculated the event trees for the liquid release. The liquid can be either a leak or a rupture occurrence, it can be cause immediate ignition, if it results in immediate ignition it can result in pool failure, if it does not cause immediate ignition it can is confined to a specific area, if the confinement is effective then there is a delayed ignition which can result in VCE what we call vapor cloud explosion, if the delayed ignition is not there if it is instantaneous then we talk about safe dispersion, if the confinement is not successful within the dikes then it can again cause immediate ignition which can result in flash fire or a safe dispersion. So, we perform event to analysis to know the consequences of various scenarios, let us now quickly look at the results which have been done using a software for a specific problem. Let us first take the jet fire as one of the outcome of the study. Jet fire in this problem is measured in terms of heat radiation which is kilowatt per square meter. Now there are different scenarios identified in the problem as 8 inches group header, pipeline from heater treater, pipeline from ER tanks, pipeline from jumbo heater treater and pipeline from dispatch pumps. The quantification available for downward damage distances in meters are given in the table form here. The red one what you see here is the value which results in unacceptable risk levels. For example, 8 inches group header pipeline which is going to heat a data which results in 100 mm leak size has caused an unacceptable damage downward distance which is not in the standards acceptable to the specific industry according to specific guidelines available for that industry. Similarly, when we talk about the tankers the different scenarios again in terms of downward damage distances are evaluated in terms of its class for stability as F for night, B and D for daytime. In terms of radiation of 4, 12.5 and 37.5 radiation intensity in terms of kilowatt per square meter. Dear friends, these are the three categories of radiation intensity for a jet pool fire as recommended to be considered for safety studies as far as industry standards are concerned in India. So, for the different vessels and tanks which have been identified as leak scenarios, heater theta, emulsion recipient tanks, jumbo heater treaters, TR tanks for different scenarios the damage downward distances in meters are available for different scenarios when this leak or these ruptures are envisaged. The second scenario study is pool fire which is also measured in terms of heat radiation in kilowatt per square meter. Similarly, for different scenarios for the pipeline and different scenarios for the tankers or vessels, the downward damage distances in meters are evaluated and, and determined from the software for a given scenario of 5 mm leak size, 20 mm leak size, 100 mm leak size and whole bore rupture for different locations of heater treater, ER tank, jumbo heater treater, TR tanks and pipelines which goes from the pump to the CTF. These are the scenarios identified as hazard scenarios in the given problem and the downward damage distances for different class of stability for day and night for different heat radiation intensities as specified by the regulatory agency are worked out in terms of distances in meters. You will see here that all these distances are acceptable standards which is within the risk acceptance levels for the given regulatory agency. When we talk about the tanker's failure for pool fire, especially in terms of catastrophic rupture that could happen in emulsion recipient tank, the distances which are shown in red here or the red band are unacceptable in terms of risk acceptance criteria for the given plant. The third parameter considered for the analysis here is explosion which is measured in terms of overpressure as bar. 
for different stability class in night and day for different scenarios in the pipeline we identify the over pressure occurred because of the different scenarios of failure. If you look at the 8 inches group header pipeline to heater data when you result or when you envisage 100 mm leak size for 8 inches group header it can cause in over pressure which is unacceptable by industrial standards practiced by this agency. Similarly, when you talk about the scenario applied to vessels or tankers or these over pressure values in terms of bar are acceptable standards as far as OSID is concerned for the specific plant. Then we perform the frequency analysis based on the risk estimates what we got in terms of the results in the previous slide. Then we estimated the failure frequencies per annum which is computed from the software for the given input data. For the scenarios identified as 8 inches group header pipeline, pipeline near tanks, heater tater etc., the pipeline links already has been identified in the beginning of the presentation. The failure frequency per meter per annum is known based on which the blocking system is also input in the given analysis. Then the fire protection system available in the scenario is considered and then the frequency failure analysis in terms of failure frequency per annum is computed. This value is compared with the acceptable failure frequency for the given standard regulatory measures for this industry and all unaccepted values are banded in red in color in the results. The same study of frequency analysis in terms of estimating failure frequency per annum is also computed for the vessels and tankers of heater tater emulsion recipient tanks, jumbo heater tater and TR tanks for the different rupture and leak size presumed in the analysis. Now based on these two frequency and consequences risk is estimated for the given study. There are two cases as which we estimate one is the individual risk other is societal risk. Individual risk is the risk of fatality of a person at a specific location assuming that the person is continuously exposed to the risk at that location. This can be easily computed as individual risk per annum which is given as IRPA which is given by the equation shown on the right side where LSIR is the location specific individual risk in a specific location of the plant and FL is a fraction of time an individual spends at that location. So if you know these two data sum them up and try to get the individual risk per annum estimated for the given scenario in the given plant. Talk about societal risk, it is of course a measure of the risk that the events post to the local population taking into account the distribution of population in the local area. This is expressed in terms of likelihood of events outcome that affect a given number of people in a single incident which is measured in terms of FN curves. Now it is interesting to know what is the population data be considered for the given scenario. The population data in terms of admin building security block near the village and plant area are taken from the recent census. The nearby village has a population of about 419 persons per square kilometer whereas the security block daytime is 2 ppl and night is 1 ppl whereas in the plant area daytime is 3 and night is 1. In the admin building the capacity concentration is higher in terms of 5 ppl whereas in the night it is 2 ppl. Then we try to mark the risk obtained from the study in terms of acceptance criteria. The values which are unacceptable is as high as 1 10 power minus 6. The values which come in alert region are 1 10 power minus 8. The values which are in unacceptable region are then marked in the red band color. IS 15656 Indian code of practice for hazard identification risk analysis shows in annex E as a summary of risk criteria adopted in some countries. In the present study we have practiced and used Netherland risk acceptance criteria for the group gathering station. To achieve the above risk acceptance criteria allow principle was employed in the following and the value is plotted as 1 10 power minus 6 as unacceptable region for risk. Let us now quickly see the risk results taken from the software 
for the specific problem identified in the case study. For different conditions of 8 inch group header, pipeline from heater theta, pipeline from ER tanks and pipeline from jumbo heater theta, the individual risk per annum is computed, societal risk per annum is also computed and the red band and values are all showing unacceptable level of risk. For example, if the pipeline from heater theta to ER tank ruptures the 25 ohm leak or 100 ohm leak or results in whole board rupture, the risk can result in unacceptable level for the given plant. Similarly, for the tankers, heater theta, ER tanks, jumbo heater theta and TR tanks, the risk levels are within acceptable values or allowed region. However, for the jumbo heater theta, if they result in 100 mm leak size or whole bore rupture, they fall in unacceptable level of risk of the given plant. For individual risk, we have also plotted the risk contours which is shown in the figure here. The risk levels in terms of Kion is shown as 0.001 average year, whereas in terms of pink is 1 10 power minus 5, in terms of orange it is 1 10 power minus 6, whereas the green one which is acceptable is 1 10 power minus 7 average year. This is of course plotted for different temperature, pressure and day and night stability class. Based on this, we have said that the individual risk is about 1.36 10 power minus 4 per annum which is resulting from the rupture of the pipeline from heater theta to emulsion recipient tank which is unacceptable. We have also plotted societal risk using FN curve where F stands for frequency average year and N stands for number of fatalities and the one which is in blue color shows the combination of societal and individual and the green one shows the maximum risk criteria and the yellow one shows the minimum risk criteria and the combination is within the band however at one specific point it is safer coming to a minimum acceptable it means the group gathering station does not cause any societal risk as far as the acceptable levels are concerned. Let us now see what is the maximum tolerable risk and negligible risk for the present study. The maximum tolerable risk is obtained as 1 10 power minus 6 per year whereas negligible is 1 10 power minus 8. In the current installation the following scenarios fall under the category of unacceptable region where the risk needs to be reduced to allot levels. 20 mm leak of the pipeline from heater theater to ER tank, 100 mm leak of the pipeline from heater theater to emotional recipient tank, rupture of the pipeline from heater theater to emotional recipient tank, 100 mm leak of the pipeline from jumbo heater theater to TR tanks, rupture of the pipeline from jumbo heater theater to TR tanks, 100 mm leak of the pipeline from dispatch pumps to common tank facility and the whole bore rupture of the pipeline from dispatch pumps to CTF. These are the scenarios where the risk is found out to be unacceptable. Therefore, risk reduction levels should be applied to bring the risk to alarm levels. We also recommended certain risk mitigation methods for the given problem. The unacceptable risk levels is essentially arising from the amount of flammable material available in the plant. To avoid any major catastrophe, the material available should be brought down consequently. This can be achieved by implementing various remedial measures. For example, one of which is trying to reduce the outflow duration which is 30 minutes because you see the repression system available in the plant is manual. Therefore, the recommendation to the given plant is now employ semi-automatic blocking system to reduce the outflow duration from 30 minutes to 10 minutes or employ automatic blocking system which can further reduce the outflow duration from 10 minutes to 2 minutes. Dear friends, once the suppression system of either automatic or semi-automatic is deployed in the plant, then the risk can be controlled because the risk level is higher here because the suppression system is manual which can result in 30 minute exposure of the outflow. Therefore, once the semi-automatic and automatic system are deployed in the given study for the scenarios which are very unacceptable in terms of risk levels, you will see that for manual system 
these are unacceptable risk levels which remain still unacceptable even when you go for semi automatic system. However, when you deploy an automatic system all the risk levels in this scenario becomes acceptable within the lock levels. So, the final recommendations given to the study are the following to make the existing blocking system of the plant into semi automatic the following recommendations need to be implemented the pipelines connecting heater treater to ER tank jumbo heater treater to ER tank pipeline to dispatch from CTF or to be equipped with hydrocarbon leak detector and transmitters at regular intervals or along the length of the pipeline which is given in the present study. It is also recommended that pressure transmitters be provided at both ends of the pipelines to notify the pressure variation which can result in leakage. Pipeline should be also provided with control valves at the inlet which can be remotely operated from the control room. They can be opened or closed depending upon the demand as far as the pipeline is concerned. Control room should be manned round the clock. Emission recipient tank and the TR tank can have system in place such that the spilled over contents in the dike are transferred immediately to other tanks because this can avoid the liquid dispersal in terms of blevy. Starting and starting of pumps should be carried out under constant supervision. Periodic inspection and thickness measurement of the pipelines, vessels and storage tanks should be done as a strong recommendation for this given problem. Once it is done then one can see that the exposure duration the radiation energy for second degree burns and third degree burns and first degree burns are available here for different heat radiation varying from 1.6 to 37.5 that is industry standard which we have got to follow. The peak over pressure which can result in 0.3 bar can result in heavy damage type therefore, the major damage to the plant equipment structure should be avoided. Over pressure more than 0.3 bar corresponds approximately to 50 percent lethality. Over pressure up to 0.2 bar would result in 10 percent lethalities and over pressure less than 0.1 bar would not cause any fatality to the public. 100 percent lethality is assumed for all people who are present within the cloud vapor. The lethality of jet fire, pool fire is assumed to be 100 percent of the people who are caught in the flame. Outside the flame area lethality depends on the heat radiation distances. For the flash fire lethality in the present study is taken as 100 percent for all people caught outdoor and 10 percent who are indoors within the flammable cloud. No fatality is assumed outside the flash area for the given problem. So, these are some of the data which are controlled in the given study which are used based on which the risk reduction are recommended to the given plant. So, this example dear friends would have thrown light on how to do QRA for liquid release models various scenarios has been identified in a case study. I hope you will follow this any questions you have please post it to NPTEL. Thank you very much.